Hola. Hola. Usted es Erika, ¿verdad? Hola amiguitos, this is Erika. Welcome back for another interactive Spanish lesson for beginners. So in our last lesson, Eric and Joel met for the first time. I'll link to that below if you haven't seen that yet. Today, they meet for a second time after Erica gets lost downtown, which never happens to me in real life, of course. So today we're going to be going over how to ask for and give basic walking directions, an overview of usted versus tú, formal versus informal, more practice with the verbs estar and ser, meaning to be, the importance of looking out for cognates in our Spanish learning, talking about yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, if you're ready, let's listen to the conversation. ¿Dónde estoy? ¿Dónde estoy? Hola. Hola. Usted es Erika, ¿verdad? Sí. Ah, usted se llama Joel, ¿no? Muy buena memoria. ¿Cómo está usted? Estoy bien. ¿Y usted? Estoy bien. Parece que se encuentra usted un poco perdida, ¿verdad? Ay, sí. Todavía no conozco bien esta parte de la ciudad. Ayer en la mañana estuve aquí, pero hoy estoy muy perdida. Usted necesita un guía turístico. Yo soy un GPS humano. <risa> GPS humano. Sí, eso es precisamente lo que necesito. ¿Me puede ayudar, por favor? Claro que sí. ¿Qué busca? Estoy buscando el parque central. ¿Dónde está? El parque central. Claro que sí. Camine tres cuadras. Doble a la izquierda. Camine dos cuadras. Doble a la derecha. Y ahí está el parque central. Perfecto. Muchísimas gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. All right, guys, drop me a comment below to let me know how much of that did you understand? 50%, 25%, 100%, 0%. I'm really curious to know where you guys are. So let's get into the lesson. Remember, this lesson is interactive. So you're going to see at least 10 questions pop up on the screen. When you see that, answer the questions out loud. It's very important to answer out loud and not just in your head, guys. Remember that you can download this entire conversation and all of our lesson notes in the resource library for free that I have linked down below. Once you've requested access to that library, you have permanent access for every single conversation and lesson that I upload to this channel. All right, let's break the conversation down into parts. ¿Dónde estoy? ¿Dónde estoy? ¿Dónde estoy? ¿Dónde estoy? Where am I? Where am I? Estoy means I am or am I, just depending on if you're asking a question or not. It's from the verb estar, meaning to be, in a temporary sense, such as when we speak of location, such as in this case, or emotion, for example. These are all things that will change, and these are the cases in which we use estar or a conjugation thereof. Here is a slide from the last lesson, just with some additional examples. So the conjugation of the verb itself will tell us the subject. It has the subject built in. So estoy, as we already mentioned, is I am. So there's no need to say yo estoy, although you could. That would literally mean I, yo, am, estoy. But it's not necessary because we know who we're talking about because of the way this verb ends. However, sometimes you can add in the subject if you want to, it's not grammatically incorrect. And also if we're using it for emphasis or clarification, as we'll see in later examples, you will also add the subject in. 
So question number one, the word aquí means here. So how would you say, am I here? I'll give you a moment. If you said, estoy aquí, you would be correct. This is a useful phrase if you're lost, if you need to point to a map and ask someone, am I here? You say, estoy aquí. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but if you are getting value out of this video, let me know about it by giving me a like, and of course, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you do not miss our next Spanish lesson in this series. All right, guys, let's get back to it. Hola. Hola. Usted es Erika, ¿verdad? Hola. Usted es Erika, ¿verdad? Hola, usted es Erika, ¿verdad? Make sure you guys are repeating all of these phrases. Even if you know what it means, definitely work on your pronunciation, especially if you're a beginner. There's so much room to really master your pronunciation before bad pronunciation habits set in. So, hello, you are Erika, aren't you? The word es is from the verb ser, which is another verb that means to be. Es simply means is or are. So here, usted es Erika, ¿verdad? You are Erika, aren't you? Ser in all of its conjugations means to be in a more permanent sense. So when Joel says, you are Erika, right? He's not going to say, está Erika, usted está Erika, because I am Erika, that's never going to change. So we're going to use es, which is from the verb ser. Again, meaning to be in a more permanent sense. Here are just a few more examples. Ser is a very irregular verb. So the conjugations do not even look similar to the infinitive form of the verb ser. However, these are just things that you're going to memorize as you go. So you may notice if you're familiar um, at all with Spanish that Joel and I are speaking to each other in a formal manner. This is because we still don't know each other well yet. We just met each other in the last lesson. So in Spanish, there's a formal and an informal way of speaking. The same applies in English in a way because, for example, you wouldn't get up from a job interview and say, all right, later. You know, you're gonna say something a little more formal than that. However, in Spanish, your tone will affect each verb that you direct at the other person. So it's, it's much more extensive. Um, to literally say the word you in a formal sense, you're gonna say usted, if you're using the word you in an informal sense, you're going to say tú. And the next portion of the conversation is a perfect example of that. Sí. Ah, usted se llama Joel, ¿no? Sí, usted se llama Joel, ¿no? Sí, usted se llama Joel, ¿no? Yes, you're Joel, aren't you? I'll go back and forth saying Joel and Joel, guys, just... It means the same thing. So, usted se llama is the formal way of saying your name is. And tú te llamas would be the informal way. So, question for you. Do you remember from the last lesson how to say what is your name both formally and informally? ¿Cómo se llama? Or ¿Cómo te llamas? How do we know when to use formal versus informal? Well, you're just going to pay attention to the person's age or your familiarity with that person or their position. I mean, those are really the three key factors as far as determining which, which verb forms you're going to use and which word for you you're going to use. Muy buena memoria. ¿Cómo está usted? Muy buena memoria. ¿Cómo está usted? Muy buena memoria. ¿Cómo está usted? It's very important to always look for cognates when we are learning Spanish. There are thousands of words that look similar or are spelled exactly the same in some cases as the English word 
and they do mean the same thing. Now there are false cognitive as well, but you'll learn those as you go. Always keep an eye out for these guys because they give you a built-in Spanish vocabulary that you didn't even know you had. So what would you think memoria means? Memoria. And what would be the translation of this entire sentence? Muy buena memoria. ¿Cómo está usted? Very good memory. How are you? Good job. To change a verb from the formal form to the informal form when speaking in the present tense, a lot of times all we have to do is add an S. So knowing how to say how are you in the formal sense, how would you say how are you if you're speaking to a child, a peer, or a friend? ¿Cómo estás? Or ¿Cómo estás tú? What's the difference there? Well, we don't always have to say the word you, usted or tú. We don't always have to add that in because as we've learned, the verb conjugation itself tells you who you're talking about. But you can feel free to add in the subject. One reason that we can choose to add in the subject is when adding emphasis. For example, say that Joel knew that I had been sick and we ran into each other and I say, ¿Cómo está? And he says, bien, pero ¿cómo está usted? You know, that's like, good, but how are you? So we're adding in the subject there for emphasis. Estoy bien. ¿Y usted? Estoy bien. ¿Y usted? Estoy bien. ¿Y usted? Now you've learned all of these words, so what is the translation of these sentences? I'm fine. And you? Very good. Hey guys, this lesson started to get really long, so I ended up splitting it into two parts. Go ahead and click on the link below in the description box to head over to part two. See you over there. All right guys, I hope that was helpful to you. Hey, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor and write conquistador here in the comments. This is how you spell it because that's what you are. You are a conqueror and you're gonna learn this language because you're serious about it. Don't forget you can download this lesson for free in my resource library linked below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you do not miss the next lesson in this series. And hey, if you're interested in a full Spanish course that follows a conversational type style similar to this lesson, then check out the description box below for my number one recommendation. All right guys, see you next time. Hasta la próxima. A la izquierda. <laughs> <laughs> Estornudar. To sneeze. See, y'all weren't even expecting that bonus lesson, were you? Mm -hmm, yeah, y'all weren't expecting that. Estoy bien. ¿Y usted? Mm, bien. Bien, yeah, bien. ¿Cómo es?